So can you build a small home studio around an iPad Pro? Let's find out. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun, and there is no question that the iPad Pro is a very powerful machine. But is it powerful enough to use in a home studio setup for recording and editing audio and video? The answer to that question is yes. Yes, it is. So let's check out my configuration and the accessories I use to make all this work. First, I have a 2020 iPad Pro, and this is the 12.9 inch version. I did a previous video about why I went with this one and not the 11 inch model, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. I also recently got the Magic Keyboard, and wow, is it great. This home studio setup wouldn't be nearly as streamlined or user friendly without it. And while it is an expensive accessory, I have to say it's really worth it. Next, I've got a USB-C hub, and for what I'm doing with this studio style setup, this hub is a critical component. It has HDMI, a USB-C port, 3.5 millimeter analog audio port, also SD and micro SD card slots, and finally a USB 3 port. So the hub allows me to connect everything together in this setup, and that includes the Samsung T5 SSD drive. Ever since the launch of iPad OS and the ability to read and write to external drives, it's made working with larger files and especially larger video files much easier. And you can not only use SSDs like this, you can also use traditional USB drives or even wireless drives to import and export media. One note though, on this hub, I discovered the USB-C connection is for charging only. So I use the other USB connector for drives. Another thing this hub enables is connecting the iPad to this HP display. This could of course be pretty much any kind of monitor, but I like this one as it's affordable and has good color accuracy for video. For regular viewing of just the iPad screen, the signal is a screen mirror, so it's not a full widescreen image. This is nice though to get a larger view of what you're working on. But when using the video editing app LumaFusion, you can take it to the next level and go full screen. For my money, LumaFusion is the best mobile video editing app on the market. And using it like this makes it almost feel like a desktop workstation. But the really nice thing is being able to do full screen video playback to an external monitor while editing on the iPad. For me, this feature alone makes this editing experience so much better. The hub also allows me to send audio to the desktop speakers, which again, really makes this feel more like a traditional setup. I personally much prefer editing and mixing to actual speakers. These are Mackie monitors, which like the HP display are solid options that won't break the bank. You could of course use any kind of speakers that you prefer. For recording audio, there are several ways to go. My default setup is using a Blue Yeti USB mic mounted on this Rode arm. Then I can record into a variety of apps like GarageBand, which of course is free. Or Ferrite and MetaRecorder are also some I use and they are excellent paid options. And by the way, you can also edit and sweeten your audio using Ferrite or GarageBand. So those are pretty great all-in-one solutions. Now, if you have professional XLR type mics like this Neumann, you can also use this setup by adding a simple audio interface. This is the iRig Pre. It adapts the XLR connection to USB and also sends phantom power to the mic. So using this setup, you can get even higher end professional quality results. And of course, still all using an iPad. And last but not least, sometimes when I'm recording or mixing, I do like to monitor my audio with headphones. And so for traditional headphones, I like these Audio-Technica. And for a Bluetooth option, these Sonys are very affordable and quite good for the price. And also the rechargeable batteries on these last a really long time. So you might be thinking, can this setup replace a laptop? Well, my answer is yes and no. It really just depends on what you're doing. For many people, this could absolutely work, especially if you're doing smaller projects, short form content, YouTube videos, and that kind of thing. If you're managing a lot of media, larger files such as ProRes, or doing lots of visual effects and motion graphics, then this system will get you partway there, but probably not all the way. 
Although you could use LumaFusion as an offline editor and then use their XML export to easily finish a project in Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, or whatever desktop class editing app you prefer. And if you're only recording or editing audio for say a podcast or a voiceover, then this setup is really pretty ideal. Regardless of how you use the iPad Pro, it's pretty amazing today what you can do with all these great mobile filmmaking tools. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments how you use your iPad Pro, or if you don't have one, how you would use it. And of course, don't forget, the beauty of this system is you can always fold it down and take it with you wherever you want to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.